This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Welcome. I thought I'd start out a little different today, being I'm a creature of habit and start and end the same way each time. So Dennis always likes a little extra music, so I thought I'd put that at the beginning. Again, welcome Frankville and Bethlehem. Welcome to those who are listening in. Um, certainly, if you know someone who is lonely or needing to feel the presence of God, certainly share this video with them or another church's video. There are several out there that are very good, very reassuring for us during these times. So ask the Lord to come in today and be present with you. Let us pray. Gracious and most loving God, we come to you from a week of stresses, a week of being unsure, a week of honestly trying to understand once again what's happening in and around our world. So today, Lord, bring your presence to this room. Bring your presence to the rooms of those who are listening in their kitchens, in their dining rooms, in their living rooms. Let them feel you all around them. Let them feel your warmth and your strength. Let them feel your promise and hope. Today, Lord, we lift all things up to you. And we love you with all of our hearts. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. God made us each unique, each different, but all equal. So today open your hearts and your minds. Know that he wants to hear from you. That he loves you inside and out. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of all nations, we praise you that in Christ, the barriers that have separated humanity are torn down. Yet we confess our slowness, slowness to open our hearts and our minds, slow to open to people of other lands, of other tongues, of other races. Deliver us from our sins of fear, our sins of prejudice, that we may move towards the day when we are all truly one in Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are one in Jesus Christ. Jesus went to the cross not for just some of us, not for just a few of us, but for all of us, no matter who we are. He loves us inside and out. So today, know that you are forgiven. Amen. The scripture that I chose for today, I found great comfort in, and I, I think that's what I was looking for. More hope. That's, I think that's what I was looking for this week was hope. Um, so the scripture I chose comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 8. And David is writing to God. And the theme is, the greatness of God assures the worth of mankind. 
God, the all-powerful creator, cares for his most valuable creation, people. Hear the word of the Lord. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants. You have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky, and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Here ends the word of the Lord. God, the creator of all. As we have gone through the weeks and we watch our seasons change and things are still not normal for us, do we realize what God's creation is? Do we realize what he put in place with his hands? Do you take the time to smell the roses, to look around at what he has created? This morning as I was driving and I looked around and I see the corn starting to come up and we see the flowers blooming and we see the birds and the squirrels in the yard Eric has a bird or a hummingbird feeder now, and the hummingbirds come in and out. Just a beautiful sight to see. Sometimes we don't take the time to remember God's creation. But as we listen to the psalm, as we listen to David, he's talking about God's greatest creation, mankind. You and I. And David talks about the child and the infant. When I think about that, I think about a childlike faith. Do we have a childlike faith? Would it be amazing to sometimes think like a child? Because a child trusts, trusts unconditionally because it knows, the child knows that they are protected, that the people around them are there to take care and protect them. There's days when we think we can do things on our own and we don't trust God. But we need to remember he is around us. The Holy Spirit is here protecting you and I. Especially in the last few months. How many times do we look at the joy before we look at the bad, the things going on around us? But if we look at a child, they don't see the bad going on around them. A child looks at the good. You and I sometimes look at people, and if they're different, we put up a wall, but not children. Children don't look at the color of skin. Children don't know if somebody is rich or poor. Children don't know what kind of families others come from. Children go into relationships with no prejudice at all. 
we get wound up, we get mad. Children are very slow to anger. And they're very quick to forgive. As I said, children love everyone. They're not like us and let the first impression decide what we're going to, if we're going to like someone or not like someone. They're not like us and see someone different and not even want to associate. So a childlike faith, that is what we should be searching for. Even in this crazy time, in this crazy world, like I said, that scripture gave me hope. It gave me hope knowing that God put everything in a place for a reason. He placed big things like the stars and the moon, the oceans, the lakes, and then he chose us. He chose each of us different and unique, but all equal. Each one of us equal, no matter what we are like, no matter what color, no matter what our social status is, no matter if we're rich or we're poor. He created each of us and placed us unique and different. Unique and different. There's times when I um, have people say, you're from Postville. Yes, yes, I'm from Postville. I'm proud to be from Postville. I think it's an amazing town with a diverse community. A diverse community where we have learned from one another. That even though someone is different than I, I can truly communicate and have conversation and show love for them. I was in a store a couple weeks ago and a couple weeks before that. Um, the very first time I was in a store and there was a family that was not the same religion as I, but I knew them. So from a social distance, we just stopped and had a few words and people seemed to look at me as so, what are you doing? And then the one a couple weeks ago was a family that was not the same color as me and I knew them, and we just stopped and talked a little bit, social distancing. But as I watched around me, my heart hurt so bad because three different times in those short few minutes, people would start down that aisle and look up and see and they would turn around and go the other way, even though the arrows tell you to go one way. They turned around and went the other way. Why? I know this world is fearful right now. We're fearful of catching a virus. But brothers and sisters, open your eyes. The coronavirus is not picking and choosing the Hispanics. It's not picking and choosing the black and brown people. It's not picking and choosing certain people. The coronavirus is not prejudice at all. The coronavirus is there that each and every one of us can come in contact with. It doesn't matter your color. 
It doesn't matter your religion. It has no prejudice. So as we look at that and we listen to the scripture, David says, you know, God's giving us as humans his most precious, his mankind, his people. He's giving us all authority. He's giving us authority to take care of his world, to take care of each other, to take care of ourselves. Authority. But you see, with authority comes responsibility. You cannot have authority without responsibility. So as responsible Christians, how are we treating his world? How are we treating each other? How are we treating those who are different than us? How are we treating ourselves? Even in this time of turmoil, those are the things that we should be asking ourselves. Not only asking ourselves and thinking about, but doing, opening our hearts and minds opening our hearts and minds to those who are different. Be like the child who loves everyone, who shows no prejudice, who is slow to anger, who trusts and only looks for the good in people. So again, as we go out, Remember our responsibility. How are we treating his world? How are we treating his people? How are we treating ourselves? Amen. I did not receive any prayers of the people this week, so I'm just going to go with what the Holy Spirit gives me. And if you guys have any prayer requests, um, certainly get them to me. My phone is fixed now, so you can text and call me. Let us pray. Gracious, most loving God, know oh, how we need you in our lives. Lord, this world is seeming to be more chaotic as we go on. Lord, be the center of our lives. Be the center of my life. Lord, we still fear the virus. But remind us. Remind us that the virus is not prejudice. That it will seek out those who may be more vulnerable. It may seek out those who are truly healthy. It is here, and this is what we deal with. Lord, we ask you to also remember our nation, our nation that is just bubbling with turmoil. Lord, be with the protesters who are peaceful, who are wanting their statement to be known that lives matter. But Lord, we also ask you to soften the hearts and the minds of those who are destroying their own communities, who are burning down housing for those who are poor, who have been waiting for them places to be open so they could call a place a home. 
for those businesses that are just trying to get started to be open and now have to deal with destruction and looting in their businesses that they have worked so hard to build. Lord, I ask you to be with the peaceful people. I ask you to be with our law enforcement. Lord, I also ask you to be with some of our young people who are in towns and places that have these protests and the looting and the rioting going on. We ask you to continue to be with Sarah Brand and Cassidy and Matea and Corbin and Cademan as they are all either in or around the cities. We ask you to be with Cassie as she works and lives right in the area of the protests. And to Ben and Emily, as they are in California. And I know they've seen rioting there too. Lord, be with all these young people and all other young people or people who are close this chaos. Lord, I ask you to place a hedge around each one, that they feel your safety and comfort in a time of distress. Again, Lord, be with the Bethlehem and Frankville churches. As we go forward, as we start to consider and think about reopening, Lord, open our hearts and minds of what you see that to look like. That it may not be exactly the same. Let us consider what we need to do to keep everybody safe. So that we can be together to praise and glorify your name. And today we pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The song that I picked um, is a little different. Um, and I just, it kept going through my head all morning. So I'm just, just getting kind of familiar with it. Um, it reminded me a few weeks ago, April Quandle had made comment about a song that we did in Sunday school, and that's the very first part of this song. Um, it's only in one key, and it's very low. That's all I could find it in. Um, it takes us all the way back to, I think, 1970. So, and as I thought of it, I kept thinking, Joanne Uhlenhock's going to say, that was groovy. So, I'm going to try it. It's called Everything is Beautiful, because we are all beautiful beautiful in God's eyes, and we should all be beautiful in each other's eyes. So I'm going to give it a try here. Summer night 
a snow-covered winter's day. Everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. There's none so blind as he who will not see. Must not close our minds, must let our thoughts be free. Everything is beautiful in its own way, like a starry summer night, a snow-covered winter day. Everybody's beautiful in their own way, under God's heaven. care about the length of his hair, the color of his skin. Don't worry about what's on the side, but the love that is within. And we're gonna be all together, everything's gonna work out fine. Just take a little time to look, and straighten Sorry, summer night, snow covered winter's day. Everybody's beautiful in their own way. Like a starry summer night, snow covered winter's day. Everything is beautiful in its own way. God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. Everything is beautiful. God placed everything with his hands, the stars, the moon, the sun, and you and I, and placed us just where we are. Go out this day with a childlike faith. Open your heart to know somebody for what's on the inside, not what's on the outside. Be safe this week. Ask the Lord to be present at every moment. And know that we are all one, one together under God. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.